that a genetic link has been discovered for schizophrenia. Hearing voices is a characteristic for schizophrenia. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Time was, people thought mental illness was a result of too much light, too much moonlight, thus the term lunatics. Now we are discovering that it is not the influence of the moon that brings on the mental illness schizophrenia. Instead, it may be the influence of the genes. Hi kids, I'm Keefe the Clown. How are you? Welcome to the Pumpkin Patch. Kids love clowns and fellows like Keefe the Clown love kids. Keefe can turn an ordinary balloon into a parrot. And here we go. We're going to put this on your shoulder. Or paint a child's face, transforming him into a fighting pirate. Hi kids. Hi kids. Keepy's clown face beams with excitement and spirit, but look a bit deeper behind the makeup, and you will find a man who struggles with bouts of depression and low self-esteem. Keepy the Clown is played by Wayne Kiefer. He suffers from a mental illness called schizophrenia. Clowning happens to be his hobby, a constructive activity encouraged by his doctor to help alleviate the cacophony of voices he hears in his head. Some of them are harmful, say, you know, like, do this or do that or something, you know, and I would say, no, I don't do that, you know. And, uh, some of it's uplifting. I hear some voices that tell me I love, that they love me, you know, and uh, tell me that those are the ones that I, that I dwell on, you know. Schizophrenia is often misunderstood. Its effects are not typically violent or threatening, nor is it a multiple personality disorder or bipolar disease. It's something much different. Schizophrenia is a brain disease. It's a chronic or long-term disease that manifests or comes out in the form of mental symptoms like auditory hallucinations or hearing voices. Um, disturbances in thinking and often beliefs that are not true called delusions. Uh, it's a disease that afflicts the young usually between 15 and 25 years of age and stays with them more or less their entire life. Before Wayne was diagnosed with schizophrenia he led a normal and healthy life. As a boy, he was like most others, popular amongst his peers. In high school, he was a wrestling champion, so good, he was recruited by William and Mary College. Until one night, his first semester in college, alone in his dorm room, his life dramatically changed. I started hearing voices outside my door, and I thought they were talking about me and making noises, and sometimes I'd open the door, peek out there, and nobody would be there. In Wayne's case, it started around age 18 or 19. That's a pretty typical age of onset for schizophrenia. The type of symptoms, that what are the overt symptoms, uh, hearing voices or hallucinations is a characteristic for schizophrenia. From that moment on, his life would never be the same. At the time, little was known about schizophrenia, so Wayne and his family were facing his disease with worry and confusion. Today, 26 years after his diagnosis, genetic researchers might have finally found some answers. An international research team was organized to study the genes of families in Ireland who have a history of schizophrenia. We were referred over a thousand families. We had to look at hospital records, go out and interview, and from there we boiled it down to about the 270 who we eventually studied who made our criteria. What they found through a process called linkage analysis was that individuals affected with schizophrenia have similar genetic mutations on chromosome 6. It was identified to be a gene that is expressed in the brain called dysbindin. The international team was headed by Richard Straub. We found that it's expressed in all areas of the brain, and luckily for us it looks like it's expressed in a more concentrated fashion in precisely those regions where from previous research schizophrenia looks to be impacting in those two regions. 
twin studies and family studies in the past have shown schizophrenia tends to be inherited. But this is the first time that genetics have been linked through DNA analysis as being a major risk factor in a complex mental illness such as schizophrenia. It's an important breakthrough in that it validates the approach and it also shows us in retrospect where we made in incorrect assumptions, where we took wrong turns, and from that knowledge we can develop you know, more efficient and quicker ways of getting at these genes. Researchers elsewhere are using the same approach of linkage analysis to discover other genes that may be linked to schizophrenia. Dr. Kari Stephenson of Deco Genetics in Iceland discovered the new Regulin 1 gene on chromosome 8. What we isolated was a gene that makes a protein called neuretulin 1. And neuretulin 1 is a, is a trophic factor that, among other things, influences the way in which synapses are formed in the, in the brain. Synapses is the place where neurons talk to each other, where you would expect to find disorder in schizophrenia. Connecting specific genes to a complex disease is extremely difficult. If the two genes on chromosomes 6 and 8 are confirmed to be related to schizophrenia, it will be a major breakthrough for genetic science. If we or other groups are able to find a pathogenic gene that really opens a door to understanding the illness and then designing drugs, not by accident, but specifically to counteract the effect of understood pathophysiological pathways, um, and that the chances of being able to develop treatments that we can't even dream of now is what's really exciting. That's the eventual payoff. New treatments could potentially help Wayne live a more stable life. Until that happens, Wayne will continue to stay busy with what he loves to do most, entertaining kids. Clowning and other activities give him confidence, increased self-esteem, and ultimately a brighter outlook on life. His doctor encourages this kind of behavior, knowing it's a great rehabilitation activity, positive and uplifting for everyone. I work with a large number of patients with schizophrenia and in my experience they are one of the gentlest people um, and they have, do not pose any extra risk to uh, anyone. When there is violence with a person with schizophrenia it is often confined to those that they love the person most or, or vice versa. So it's within the family, it is out of emotional frustration. Wayne has brought more smiles and joy to people. You like Keefe? Yeah. And Wayne has an innate talent to make people laugh. I was coming home from a clown conference in Waynesburg. I go to a clown conference every year. And I was coming from Waynesburg to Yorktown. And I was stopped by, by an officer. The officer said, did you know you were speeding, son? I said, no, sir, I didn't. He said, well, uh, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going home to take my medication. He says, well, what kind of medication do you take? I said, well, it's an antipsychotic. He says, go on, son. <laughs> Good thing for Wayne that he ran into such an open-minded policeman. Mental illness continues to carry a stigma in our society. Unfortunately, that's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.